Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to show you guys the last character I'm going to be playing in Grim Dawn before the 3.9 Path of Exile League, which is going to be my Primal Strike Druid. Now, Primal Strike is a ranged attack slash melee attack restricted to a two-handed weapon, and I'm pairing it with Arcanist because we are going to be going mainly Lightning, and Arcanist offers a lot of juicy damage bonuses, such as like Iskandra's Elemental Exchange, which gives us elemental damage and flat elemental damage, Overload, which gives us a huge amount of offensive ability and some Aether Res, also an electrocu Electrocution proc, which is pretty interesting. Um, inner Focus, which gives Spirit and Offensive Ability. I'm pretty sure Spirit is our damage source as well, so that's good. We also get Arcane Will for all dam- or basically Defensive Ability and all damage. Maven Sphere, which is the number one strongest defensive skill in the game, I believe. And then uh, I think we're going like one point into Nullification, and then I believe we're getting Elemental Balance for crit damage. In Shaman, currently I've got a Brute Force, Primal Strike, along with the Transmitter since we spam it. Torrent. Storm Surge, uh, Storm Colors Pack. Eventually we'll be maxing out Raging Tempest from Wind Devil. I just don't really feel like using it right now. One point Grasping Vines for Devotions. One point Mog Drogon's Pact. I should be having uh, 10 of 10 here in Heart of the Wild. And then one point in Oakskin. Now character's level 67 right now. I'll have a Grim Tools for you guys. Um, the Devotions, there's always a lot to talk about with Devotions in Grim Dawn. So basically the main thing you're gonna be seeing here is Hand of Ultos, which procs on Critical Strike, which is a current eight target Chain Lightning, along with Primal Strike being pretty much eight targets. Uh, it goes up to 10, and then I've got Grasping Vines with Raised Dead, which essentially is similar. It's like a weaker version of Elemental Storm, but I much prefer the Revenant uh, passives. And then whenever I take damage, there is a 50% chance that a Celestial Spear smites targets in the face, dealing decent damage and stunning them. And that's pretty much the, the main Devotion Tree setup. The auras I'm using currently, I've got the Excondra's Exchange I showed you guys, Electrifying Weapons, which is granted by, I believe, the Hell's Bane Ammo. I've got Stormcaller's Pact, which is this right here. I've got Ignifar's Presence, which is basically just on this random legendary I found. I've got Stormcaller's Aura, which is coming from, I believe, our Eye of the Storm, and then Maven's Sphere. So to get started with this character, if you want a really super solid weapon, you're gonna to need to have Ashes of Malmoth. And I'm gonna show you my rotation that I like to do. So I like to go to, I think it's, yeah, we can go Ugden Bug. There's two, there's two places. Is it Barrowholm actually? Give me a second. Maybe it's Barrowholm. I think it's Barrowholm South is where you wanna go. Yeah. Okay, so Barrowholm South. Now these mobs are pretty much scaled to my level. I'm 67. The mobs here are in the 60s, so this is pretty much average of what we've got. The build feels super nice right now, not gonna lie. Um, the attack speed we have is pretty much what makes the build feel so nice. So there are a lot of um, rock mossy type monsters in this area. Um, the, mon the mossy monsters can drop a weapon called a Ugdenbog Spark Thrower. Ugdenbog Spark Thrower is a monster infrequent for Primal Strike, and it's basically what we're going to be using for the most part throughout the entirety of the game. Now there's a spawn point right here for what I'm going to show you in a little bit. There's one of three spots that I can spawn. So the Ugdenbog Spark Thrower MI automatically comes with 40% crit damage to Primal Strike, along with, uh, I believe, a little bit of attack speed, some offensive ability. Um, did I say 40% crit damage? Uh, and then I think it has innate conversion on it. And then you have your prefix and suffix you can roll. Your suffix, the most common one that's really beneficial is alacrity, which gives a ton of attack speed. And then I think for your your main stat or your prefix, which is poisoned for me, would be thunderstruck. But you don't have to worry about farming a crazy one at the beginning. You just in general want one. So this is the guy who drops it. It's a it's this base type, which is that golem. So essentially, what I'm going to do right now is show you guys the patrol that I kind of did to get myself my starting one. Because once you get this weapon, you pretty much just take off from there and that's really all you need at the beginning. So I think there's another spawn. Oh, here it is, perfect. So you see right here where I'm at on the map, here we go. And then the last spawn would be right here in this corner. So you have a spot here, a spot here, and a spot here. 
When you go inside this cave, it's probably the most dense packed area for these moss guys. This is also kind of nice because if you decide to go ahead and do this, um, if you are in Malmoth essentially, or if you're on another character um, and you decide to do this, you will get so many Ugin blooms. Now the only reason why I say another, oh here we go, this is good. We want to we want to find hero mobs of these. The only reason why I say another character is unless you have uh, purchased the skip, like I don't really know how to explain it. If you know what I'm talking about, then if you have the skip that you get from Forgotten Gods, you can teleport here ahead of time. If you don't have the skip, then you're going to be like level 40 or 50 by the time you can access Malmoth. In which case, I recommend just getting it from another character. But I don't even remember the base level requirement for the first one. I say that because there are different tiers of, uh, of spark throwers. So for people who have played Path of Exile, this is kind of like a bow build. You can kind of compare it to somewhat like Lightning Arrow, except there's no shotgunning. Um, but it has a lot of leech in the build, which is what makes it really nice. Um, so for example, if I were to take some damage, I'll show you the leech I've got. If I take some more damage, come on, hurt me. Okay, here's the leech. Okay, little. I had to hit a potion there, I got a little low. Standing still is definitely not what this build is meant to do. Perfect. So unfortunately, I did not find one of the ones I was looking for, but I will show you another location to get them. I guess you guys can see the build in action while I'm doing this. So if you go to Coven's Refuge, this is the much more ideal method to do it, but if you feel like you cannot, like, properly... I don't know, if you feel like you don't want to do this method, then I'd recommend the previous method that I showed. But this method is essentially... You go to Coven's Refuge, and you're going to go all the way to the right over there. And when you go to the right, Mogdrogan is sitting out there. And that's the entrance to Ancient Grove, the uh, dungeon. If you run the dungeon, and you find the NPC that's in there, he's always in the same spot, he will sell you um, three different types, I think, of spark throwers. There's like a flamethrower, a spark thrower, and like a corrosion thrower. Um... And then if you're lucky, you just have a spark thrower right there, and you can just buy it, and then you're pretty much good to go for your weapon. So, with this character, there's a lot of different things that you can do, but I've decided I wanted to keep it simple. Um, simplicity kind of reminds me a lot of Path of Exile, of how you don't want to put 11 buttons in a build and spam them all the time on rotation, because it's super annoying. So there's a skill called Savagery, if you really want to be a tryhard. Oh, hold on a second here. Oh, oh, maybe I get an Ugdenbog Spark Thrower? Nope, no spark thrower. Maybe from these mobs? Nope. So there's a skill here called Savagery. And basically what Savagery does is you can get the modifier for it, which gives you a total damage modifier and physical resist. You also get Tenacity of the Boar, which is offense ability, defensive ability, slow res and health regen, and Storm Touched, which gives electrocution, attack speed, and chance at lightning. But Savagery is kind of like Reeve from Path of Exile, where you basically use Savagery and you get a stack. And you need to keep your stack up all the time. And it's super annoying because every three seconds you would have to use a skill that really doesn't do much. So I tried attaching devotions to it, but it just doesn't really feel right constantly using another skill that's literally doesn't do anything except proc something. Um, so I decided to drop Savagery for now. Maybe I'll go back into it later. Empowered Eyes of Flame. Things, dude. Okay, so right here, this is essentially where you would go to get into your... Is it going to give me a skeleton key, actually? I think it does give you a skeleton key. Yeah, so you're going to go inside here, and then once you go through here, the skeleton key area is there, and you can get your Ugdenbog Spark Thrower right there. I'm not 100% sure how this build will deal with, like, endgame bosses. 
I'm pretty sure for standard content, it would be totally fine. But for, oh, here we go. I can show you the other ones now. But if you're trying to do like Celestial bosses, I don't know if Primal Strike is better than Savagery because Savagery seems to be more single target and Primal Strike seems to be more AOE. So this is the Flamethrower. You're not looking for the Flamethrower. And this is the Bile Launcher. You're looking for the Spark Thrower. Any Spark Thrower you get at the beginning is probably gonna be better than pretty much anything you can find because of the, essentially what it gives already to Primal Strike. Um, the goal that you're looking for is you're just trying to find a weapon that is not converting to another element. You want to try to stick with uh, lightning conversion. It's okay if you get another type of conversion, but definitely towards end game, you're lightning conversion. So early game, it's whatever. Um, by far, the best affix you can get is attack speed. Attack speed will make your build feel so much better. Uh, and then pretty much where we're at now, so we're at 2400 offensive ability before most augments and decent components. Um, so we're trying to stack as much offensive ability as possible uh, because offensive ability governs our accuracy and our critical chance. And in our build, we, we can get so much critical damage. So our weapon gives us 40 crit damage. Stormcaller's Pact gives crit damage. And then the passive in our Canis tier also gives crit damage. So crit damage stacking with offensive ability should really scale us super, super far. And in terms of Elemental Shred and Elemental Pen, uh, we have currently Ultos, who whenever we crit, on a 1.4 second cooldown does the Chain Lightning, which reduces Elemental Resistance. Uh, and then I was getting uh, Arcane Bomb here, but Arcane Bomb just felt really wonky to use because of the one second delay, so maybe that's something we'll check out later. So the other one that I've got is Raised Dead, which is on our Entangling Vines, which makes those adds. Like I said, it's the worst version of the Elemental Storm. And then for leveling, I would recommend rushing Kraken and then Hydra, because for leveling, Kraken gives you 10% attack speed. With 10% attack speed, along with movement speed and crit damage, and Hydra gives you basically just, a, oh, Hydra gives you Leech, which is really nice, and a ton of damage in general. Actually, I don't even know if I fully need Hydra. 15 OA, 62 plus 25, never mind, Hydra is fucking fantastic. We're keeping Hydra. So one of the cool things uh, I was talking about with Arcanist, you get Nullification. Nullification is one of the skills in Grimdown that a lot of people don't realize how strong it is. So there's a lot of monsters in this game that do like reflect and there's a lot of monsters in this game um, that for example have uh, it's kind of like a bubble they have on. I call it like Maven Sphere because I kind of have it on me right now but for monsters it feels like it reduces damage by like 90%. I'm pretty sure with Arcanist's um, uh, Arcanist, what is it called again? Arcanist Nullification, you can actually cleanse off the bubble and stuff, off of enemies, which makes it super beneficial so you don't have to wait like 5 to 10 seconds. It's also good because if you're playing a leech build and a target pops that bubble, you can't really leech when 90% of your damage is pretty much gone. Do, 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 do. Now, also for my set, I plan on using a set called Ultos. Um, Ultos is a Primal Strike set that is built around melee Primal Strike. However, I don't really think that it'll hurt us too much to go ranged because the only piece of gear that we wouldn't use from Ultos would be the weapon because the Ultos set is a melee set. So we replace the weapon we still get a four piece set bonus and then we get a lot of other things to mess around with, which I'm pretty excited for. Pew, pew. Nice, level 68. Okay, and then once you kill this guy, basically right here, this guy opens up the area or allows access to the uh, the dungeon right here where you can find your spark thrower pretty much guaranteed from the shop like if you do at least like two runs anyway that's pretty much about it just trying to get you guys updated with some stuff i know again i've been slacking because i've just been having fun in grim dawn and the videos can be a little tedious sometimes so you guys have a wonderful time hope you guys enjoyed yourselves 
Uh, remember, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below or feel free to hop on my Twitch at twitch.tv slash pox and ask me. Like again, or again, like I said, I'll put the uh, Grim Calc for this character in the comments and you'll just pretty much get exactly what my character has up to this point. So take care, have a wonderful time. I'll see you guys all tomorrow.